Mm, let's see. Um, do we still have people waiting or should we just go ahead and start? I'm letting people in as soon as they pop up. So right now we don't have anybody waiting and I'll just keep letting people in. Okay, all right. Well, we can go ahead and start. I believe we have all of our panelists um, on board with this. So um, first of all, um, I'm excited. This is our first Zoom. I'm really um, happy and I'm very thankful for all of you to join us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Selena Jesus. I'm uh, from Gubo'o, Gubo'o District. I am the Senior Director of Programs and Tribal Relations for the Native American Advancement Foundation. Um, this afternoon, I'd like to um, introduce and welcome um, my co-moderator, who is Maisie Ortega. She is um, the current uh, reigning Miss on the Autumn Nation. Hi, Maisie. Hi, it's good to um, Oh, sorry. And also, um, I'd also like to um, introduce our panelists this afternoon. We have um, Amy Vaughn. Thank you. Amy, uh, she comes from the Kumababi community in the Suk Dog District. She has served um, for the community in many areas, uh, in many roles as a former Miss Donna Autumn Nation uh, uh, Project uh, OIDA coordinator with TOKA. Um, the culture teacher at Babakiri High School and coordinator for the Unity Run. Uh, she is a graduate of Thana Autumn Community College and currently works with the International Indian Treaty Council uh, and International Indigenous Peoples Human Rights Organization in Tucson. Thank you, Amy. Then we have um, Clifford Pebble. He is uh, over at the TOCC Department of Agriculture. And then we also have Joyce McGill, who is also a TOCC Department of Agriculture. And we have Dr. David Fazino. He is a professor at Bloomsburg uh, University who has spent significant, significant time on the Donald Nation related to food sovereignty. And also uh, joining us, Mr. Johnson. Um, he's a member of, of the AHO Center for Sustainable Agriculture. So thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Um, um, also, oh, Maisie. Uh, also, um, we would like to introduce Joyce Miguel, who is the TLCC Department of Agriculture, and as well as, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Celine, did you already introduce everyone? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We'd also like to thank and recognize Monique Ramon. My, she is my second yes. for the Miss Thana Optimum Nation, as well as recognizing Amy Spotted Wolf, uh, Miss, she is the Miss Indian Arizona, as well, and, as well as Gwad Marcio Ortega for attending. So thank you so much for attending today and just good day. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you, Maisie. Um, uh, and this is, for, this is for all of our, our audience because you know, I can hear some background noise or the echo. If you could please um, mute your microphone. Um, and then also at any time, everybody, anybody is welcome to submit um, a question in the chat box. So once we, um, when you submit the question, we will go through the questions that were pre-submitted and then we will address the, we'll ask the question during the Q&A session. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, now at this, at this time, I would like to, um, Turn it over to Maisie. Maisie is going to share an opening song with us. Thank you so much, Selena. Well, for all of you who don't know me, Skukudnik, Anya Bjugik, Maisie Ortega, Anya Bamjic, Jukduak Jikshan, Nijua, Monica Cleveland, Nyaal, Gary Ortega, Nyawask, William Ortega, Bud, Nakak, Pauline Leonbud, Nabab, Stanford Cleveland Senior Bud, Nyahu, Diane Jose. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Maisie Ortega. I come from the San Pedro community in the Strictowak District 
and my parents are Monica Cleveland and Gary Ortega. My paternal grandparents are the late William Ortega and the late Pauline Leon. My maternal grandparents are the late Stanford Cleveland Sr. and Diane Jose. I am 18 years old and I am the Miss Donaldson Nation 2021-2022. And it's so nice to meet everyone. And at this moment, I will be singing a song for all of you. And at the end of my song, I will be giving an explanation and who taught it to me as well, because it is tradition to do that. So. song and for me uh, this song was actually taught to me by a unity coordinator and he is part of the Thanatham Nation and I first learned it when I was first going to unity and it was nice dancing to it and then when I learned the origins of it um, I always heard it whenever I would go to uh, a kuhina which is um, a, a gathering where we share where many elders or uh, Young, younger people share their songs and share their knowledge about it. So I was glad that I learned this song because running is a big part of my life. I play a traditional game that involves a lot of running and I hope you guys get to see it. And <laughs> I'm sorry if I uh, mispronounced a couple of words in there. I'm still learning it. And a lot of uh, times I'm glad that I get to learn these songs. And this one is especially very important. To me. So I thank you so much for learning and for <laughs> hearing me uh, sing it. It is uh, actually my first time singing that song in front of uh, others because I'm, oh, goodness, I'm so nervous to sing it. And I'm also still learning um, how to do the um, sh shock good and others call it shite good, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think everyone for listening to me sing it. And I hope that the song that I shared, you know, you take it with you and um, this is our tradition of sharing who who gave it to us and um, as we sing it and pass it on to others, I hope that you guys carry it with you and uh, know that it brings strength and know that it motivates you and in a way I like sing I like the traditional songs because it feels like you're carrying our ancestors and all of our traditions. So thank mm -hmm. you for listening. Tapa. Hi, thank you, Maisie. That was a that's a song too, like that I learned to with our youth council. I mean, unity runs, um, any kind of um cultural activities that are being held on the nation. That's one of the many songs that 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 our uh, nation members share. So I'm familiar with that, but I wasn't gonna mess it up with Maisie. So <laughs> but okay, so thank you again, Maisie. And and at, at this time, um we can go into our, our, our Q&A um, session for, for our panelists. Um, I know we did submit um, um, questions that, that they could pick and, and uh, they could answer. And so um, we'll go into that. And then so the first question uh, that we have is, um, this is for Amy, just the same thing, and then David. Um, what does food sovereignty mean to you? Amy, you can go first. All right. Uh, it's good coding, everybody. It's really good to be here. 
Um, thank you for the invitation to be on the panel. I'm really excited, especially to talk about food sovereignty and just the food sovereignty work happening on the nation. Um, well, first of all, I think, you know, as often we've always been food sovereign, you know, even before that word existed, um, we've always been able to provide for ourselves and make those decisions on how we provide for ourselves. So I think um, there's different definitions um, that we could look at. Um, I, I, I just wanted to say that first that I think we've, we've already had it, you know, we've always grown our own food or either um, um, harvested wild foods and medicines. And so we were already making those decisions for ourselves on how we were gonna provide for ourselves. But um, in modern times, food sovereignty is kind of a, a new term um, that's you know happening, especially um, to encompass the work that's happening. And again, it's just um, the, the means to provide for ourselves um, by way of food, you know, how are we being self-sufficient and self-reliant and providing for our communities and for our families through food. So many ways that that's happening and I'm excited to talk about it today or tonight. So that's my, my answer. Thank you, Amy. So I'm going to uh, turn to David. Okay. Uh, thanks, Selena. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, I'm not sure I can do much better than that, um, especially as it is uh, for the Tone Autumn Nation. Uh, food sovereignty is a is a concept and a and a construct um, that we use to describe local control over food, and a lot of this has to do with things like health in the community, um, wellness in the community, and taking care of one another overall. Uh, food sovereignty is about control of the production of the foods, uh, as well as the consumption of the foods and distribution of the food. So it's throughout the entire food system as a whole. Thank you. David, um, my next question it goes to the group, the whole the, the panel. Um, the, and then uh, we can just start you know again we can uh we'll start with sterling and then we'll go with uh clifford amy uh joyce and david so the question is when did you first begin planting oh sterling i'm sorry sterling all right um <laughs> Well, I think it was more like almost 10 years ago so when I actually got applied for an apprenticeship where I actually grew something. Uh, well, whatever they brought me to read, there's um, FFA, which is uh, Future Farmers of America, that that um, runs a class uh, for uh, freshmen to high school. And I didn't always saw things growing, but I never actually planted and I didn't realize until they planted during the summer. And it was um, devil's claw and, and squash. And that was it. And just seeing things growing. And of course, uh, being a cowboy and going to rodeos and just do the agriculture uh, and growing and growing alfalfa, hey, was probably uh, was was a big part of my life, and oh, still is. Sure. Uh, still is a part of my life that you no, know, I never planted it, but I was no, I always knew when the hay was at the at its best and the hay at, when it was at its worst. So to actually plant something was about ten, almost ten years ago. And, uh, when I applied for an apprenticeship program after um, a rodeo injury that put me out um, for a couple of weeks, um, where that uh, began um, something I haven't begun no, sure. begun to um, understand or you know comprehend um, as far as culture. I know I only knew culture um, through the 
you know, Wapka or the Cowboys um, point of view, but never really got to see, it, you know, from a farmer's point of view. So I'm really glad to actually get to see it happen. Um, how important it is and even culturally significant it is to to the people. So I feel like I uh, I feel that to me, you know, growing and and taking care of ourselves is you know all in the same, you know, just how we see it. So um, yeah, so that was almost ten years ago, about two thousand eleven. Um, that's when I um, first planted, and I think I planted uh, the bow first. That was thing was the first thing I ever planted. Um, okay, I don't really count science class. We did do beans, uh, but I don't really count that. Um, that was for science, but to actually grow not and to see something fall through, it was um, the bow. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. I know there's like, you know, different components, different, you know, things when that people plant when they first started. So, and then I would, uh, same, the same question for Clifford. When did you first begin to plant? <clears throat> I guess, um, uh... As far back as I can remember, it's a long time ago, um, growing up with my grandfather and working in his oitik, and uh, also my grandmother has his, her own oitik, so I go back and forth and planting bow, hard, corn, and all that stuff. So it's been uh, a while. <coughs> Okay. Um, Amy? Uh, I spend a lot of time with my, um, both of my, my hood and my goth growing up. And um, from my, from my hood, um, it was a lot of wild harvesting, um, medicines and just different foods like baidach and things like that. Um, so I, I just want to like share that that's like my first contact with food and with my God. Um, she grew a lot of flowers um, and she was a big lover of flowers all her life. Um, so that was something that I grew up around. But as far as food, I, I um, always, uh, I think a lot of our family members always had, um, or we were growing patty pan squash um, that we would eat um, my family and Adijukshan or Little Tucson or my, with my gok. Um, but similar to Sterling, um, just, you know, having experiences growing up, especially through school and things like that. But hardcore farming, <laughs> um, it was definitely when um, I was working with, with Toka Donald and Community Action and really getting um, on the ground all year experience. Um, harvest and to providing back to the community. Um, so that a big, um, a big uh, transition as far as Oibuk knowledge for me. Um, just a real quick reminder to those of us that joined us a little bit later, if you could please mute your, your microphone because we could hear some background noise, but uh, thank you. Um, Again, the same question uh, to Joyce. Uh, when did you first begin planting? Um, for myself, it, I um, started with the, the TOCC um, agriculture intern in 2016. Um, and I started to learn planting um, with, with the agriculture extension. <laughs> Program. And um, during that time when I I, um, I started working here, um, we were going into the um, summer planting. And um, we go we grow different um, traditional foods. Um, and when I got here, um, 
um, I didn't know much about our actual, you know, the traditional foods that were eaten, you know, um, for a while that our ancestors grew. And so it was, it was interesting um, to start that way because I did want to learn <clears throat> um, for myself to be able to do that at home. But um, for that part, I didn't know how to start. So um, having the opportunity to work um, alongside with Clifford, um, it was a good opportunity to learn um, from the ground up to um, leveling and then um, garden planning. Um, and then um, how, how to um, care for your, your, your seeds. Um, like when planting, the most important thing that I was taught by Clifford was to talk to your seeds while you're planting. And that's um, a, a, a thing that what we use when we teach um, community members um, and, and um, the, the kids, um, we teach them to talk to their seeds. And um, once they plant, you know, to care for their seeds, um, like, if, like if it's their child and to, um, to continue to talk to the, to the plant, to the seeds, care for it. And then <clears throat> once I learned and I was confident enough to um, start my garden at home and I, I started from the ground up, um, I grew um, some watermelon and some beans and um, the one um, when I got my harvest of the watermelons, I I went and I shared it with my community members in in um, in Omegum. I gave it to the elders. Um, so and I I continue to do that. And but um, that's so I have uh, twofold in 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 planting is learning here and then I can go back home and and um, do it on my own as well. Oh the um, oh just to mention um, the the watermelon is the uh, the mirror, which is the yellow immediate watermelon and and that that's uh, one of the ones that um, the elders really enjoyed um, having when I did give it to them. So that concludes my answer. Thank you. Thank you. That's very interesting because I know there's different, even for me, I'm a beginner gardener. <laughs> um, you know, the different types of melon, you know, um, I'm still learning about that too. So thank you for sharing, you know, I know there's the yellow, then the, of course, the ones that everybody knows is like the, the red, I mean, the green, and then the yellow one, but, um, and then last but not least, David, um, what was the first, uh, oh, wait a second, when did you first begin planting? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, was Selena, was that me? <laughs> okay, that yeah. Huh? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we, I, it's really humbling to hear all the, the different stories of folks that have done work with agriculture. Um, and, you know, it seems like every time uh, you put your hands in the soil, you're starting over again. Um, you know, in terms of tradition for me, uh, my grandfather came over from Sicily um, and he worked as a gardener his, uh, basically his entire adult life as a career. And he used to save his tomato seeds. Uh, and I remember my uh, dad having a, a farm or, a, you know, a small garden in the back of his yard. And probably as a boy, I probably planted tomato seeds, uh, just like my grandfather. Uh, and, um, you know, I, you know, I continued to work, uh, you know, I don't, I don't honestly remember, uh, when that was exactly because I'm getting older. Um, but I can tell you, um, when the last time I planted was, and it's, it's right here and it was today, I got inspired by, uh, presenting for everybody today. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. I could see that. I was like, hey, I wonder what he's planted in there. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, amazing. Okay. The next question is for Amy and David. What first got you interested in farming and gardening? 
So go ahead, Amy. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I think um, it's always just been something that has been taught to us. I remember um, being a young girl at Santa Rosa Ranch School and um, it was just something that we grew up um, knowing or being taught by Miss uh, the late Della Anton um, and then also um, other, other awesome teachers that were there to teach us because as we were learning songs and we were learning dances, it was all, that was all behind it. You know, this is the reason why we sing these songs. We pray for rain, for our plants, for the land, for, and for us. And so um, growing up with that knowledge, um, it, I, just, I just knew that it was important. Um, and seeing, uh, like I said, my grandmother's uh, practice that in different ways. But I, I would say that, um, I guess I really opened my, my eyes to, um, to the sense of, of purpose or to put it into action. Um, when I was working with Toka, and at that time we were doing a lot of youth organizing work, youth leadership work, um, where we actually delved into the um, the food work or the oidak work. Um, but that transition came, and um, Mr. Pablo uh, came to Toka one day, and I remember having that conversation with him, um, or he had with us. You know, he came to see what we were up to. He came to see if we um, were growing farmers, you know, working with young people and not to forget that. That was important for our community too. And so um, I remember him coming to, to talk with us and to say, you know, he's, he's, he would, that he was concerned that there weren't um, young, young farmers and um, just to share um, information like, you know, thinking about in the in the early twenties or go all people in the past, you know, how much food we were growing. We were growing thousands and not millions of pounds of bow. Um, but then, which was you know about the early two thousands um, when we were working there, and there was very little that we were growing. Um, and so to kind of put that into perspective, to be like, wow, you know, that's what we're capable of. That's we are capable of providing for ourselves um, by growing food. That's what, where the, the light bulb <laughs> really went off and gave us that sense of purpose. And, they, and that's when a lot of the um, um, uh, programming um, or the focus around uh, revitalizing Atam Hai uh, uh, really came into play. And we began to develop um, programs or internships really um, one year, two year internships for young people to really have um, that experience of working in um, in Anoibek from a small community garden that we started at um, IHS to um, the big, big fields out at Papago Farms, um, spending weekends out there and working under the hot sun. Um, and working these big fields too, um, also working at an Akjin Oibek, um, like the Alexander Pancho Memorial Farms. Um, so having all of those different experiences um, really changed my life, really. And so um, it's, it's, that's what I would say. So I, 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 I owe it to Clifford. <laughs> I'm glad that he's, that he's on here to acknowledge him in that way. So, and I know that he's helped a lot of people open their eyes to this this work. So he he's a he's a good man, and he's someone to really thank for that for giving us that guidance to to start this and look where we are. You know, ten years later, we've really grown in that way, and that's why I was really excited about this panel because um, it's a way to continue that. So that's it. Thank you so much for answering, Amy. That is an amazing answer. And I know that um, a lot of us have grown up with our grandparents and going through, and especially going to, having to have that class at school of our traditional food. So that is very nostalgic. <laughs> and so that same question goes to David. Uh, what first got you interested in farming and gardening? 
Thanks, Maisie. And yeah, that was a pretty amazing answer, Amy, for sure. Um, and it's going to be tough to follow. Um, I mean, I can just say that, you know, maybe some of you out there don't have the same type of continuity, like you're not, you know, you, don't, you haven't been working in the soil for a long period of time. And uh, maybe you, you did it with your grandparents or uh, an aunt or an uncle or uh, maybe your parents. Um, but teachers come along when you're ready to, uh, to be a student. Uh, and for me, it took going to uh, Slippery Rock University and meeting a guy by the name of Larry Patrick. Uh, and Larry was, a, I describe him as a mountain of a man. He was a really big guy and he did a lot of farming with horses. Uh, he's out in around the Zillian Opal area in Western Pennsylvania. If you ever are out this way or a Steelers fan for some reason, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but um, it's, it's really amazing. The, the agriculture and the work that you can do um, with that. And like I said before, every time that you plant a seed and every time um, you go out and do that work, uh, you're, it's like you're doing it for the first time. And, you know, we just had our first day of spring and um, finally in Pennsylvania, the, the winter seems to have lost its grip. Um, so it's just a, a very enjoyable experience all around. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question. It is, I know it's a lot of um, replies and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Selena. Well, thank you, Maisie. And then our next question is um, gonna direct it to Joyce. Uh, what community research should you do before getting started on a garden? Um, as um, I've learned here with Clifford, um, the first thing, if you're starting from the ground up, first thing, um, you got to look for your water source. Um, and think about <clears throat> um, utilizing the, the um, surface runoff and um, looking at the ground and seeing where the, the water runs and, and um, use, use it um, to di like divert it to your garden. And also another thing is um, to keep in mind is to um, um, locate your, your, um, your area close to a uh, water faucet because um, in time, you know, there's gonna be times when, um, when it's not raining that you need a backup for, for your, um, your garden to water your garden. So it, that, that's kind of the first thing that you need to look for. Um, and then the next thing <clears throat> that you would have to do is um, um, put up a good strong fence. Um, we've heard plenty of stories um, from community members um, they would ask questions about, <clears throat> or they would share their stories more or less, um, saying that the, the livestock got in and got to their plants and everything. So um, the one thing that Clifford always, you know, um, shares with them is to put up a good, a good fence. And, um, and then with that, you know, um, I know that it's not well known in the community on the nation um, is that, you know, the agriculture extension program um, um, goes out and helps the community um, with the garden. Um, we've helped several um, community members in around the nation um, starting up a garden or um, helping them prepare their their garden bits if they already have a garden established. Um, and then um, the next thing, the other thing that you would um, do is, you know, decide what you're going to plant, what you're going to plant, um, do a, a garden plan. Um, it's an important part of keeping track of what you grow and in, in what bit of your garden did you grow it because crop rotation is important because of, um, you know, the different plants that um, 
need more nutrients. And when you're growing, like I'll use an example, corn is a heavy um, feeder. And so it takes up a lot of um, nutrients um, from the soil. So the next, when once you harvest the, the corn, um, when your next planting season, you'll, you'll have to um, put um, a lot of soil amendments back into the soil so that way it builds up and um, you put back the nutrients into the soil. And um, so this is um, the one, like the many things that I learned through the agriculture extension program, the internship. And then the other thing um, is rotating your crops. Um, you you wouldn't want to grow your corn in that same bed. You'll have you'll rotate it in in a different area of your corn. So it, it's it that is a big question. I mean a big uh, yeah a big question. And there's many answers that you can give, but I'll just shorten it. But that the one thing like I mentioned at the beginning is that just to look for your um, water source when you're beginning and um, and then have a plan, have a plan. And, and then, um, like I mentioned, there's resources out um, on the nation that, that can help you go beyond, beyond the, um, the, the, the start of your garden. Thank you. And, and that's one of the reasons why um, we set this Zoom uh, session. So, you know, again, to, to get feedback from the experts, because I'm a beginning gardener, <laughs> and, and just to share the input of what is available out there, you know, what other resources are available and what we can do, you know, again, um, with this whole pandemic, I know there's a lot of things that have, you know, changed and, and people, but even like what Amy shared before, you know, having to go back to our culture, our traditions, uh, going back to, you know, what we used to eat, you know, back then versus what it is today. Um, I know those were some of the things that we had talked about uh, here in, in Gawa District. And so uh, I can, um, I'll share some of that later in our in um, at the end of our, our session, but you know again I, I thought that was a really excellent um, answer Joyce because it just really um, opened up you know other resources that are available for people that might be interested in you know starting their own garden or maybe even in the the other districts the nations you know the community if they don't have a community garden maybe this is something that they would be thinking about and, you know, so again, having to provide not just for families, but also um, for their community, um, you know, just, just different ways, different uh, other options that are out there. So again, thank you, thank you for that. Um, so right now, I guess we can go, uh, the next question that we have is um, for Amy. Um, the success stories or lessons learned like in similar communities, can you share what you've, <laughs> maybe some of the things that you've experienced while, you know, going out to different, um, you know, events or communities or the districts mm -hmm. right there at Toka? Uh, well, it was, um, I guess the, our classroom ended up being the, um, the OIDAC at the hospital. Um, I just was really um, generous in that they paid for our water and it was just a, a, an oidic that had been um, used by a lot of different uh, community members or either employees at the hospital, but it, had, um, it hadn't been worked in some time. And so, um, like Joyce said, the, the, the ground up work um, was really an important part of that, you know, designing our oidic, um, I was really happy that we had um, a group of about 12 interns, young people from the nation that, um, you know, we had as a team. And I think we were really blessed in that way because we were not only able to experience the work, but also what it means to work together. And I learned some really big lessons with that, um, that I think 
um, comes naturally, especially when you're when you're working with people in a way that um, counting on each other, you know, communication and, and just putting in that work together. It really um, is something that I've seen across the board from that experience to also working at um, Santa Bear Co-op Farm. Um, I had the opportunity to work there too, and just it's such, um, it's, it's humbling and really strong work to the point where, um, you know, you move as a team. And I remember uh, when I first started working with the co-op, I was, I would tease the, the team, um, Jamie, uh, Jamie uh, Encinas and uh, Ray Anton and Gabe Mendoza and others um, who, you know, they would work hard all day. Um, they wouldn't take breaks unless they did it together. They wouldn't eat until they were all ready to eat together and things like that. Um, but I guess just um, really counting on the on the community was a big learning lesson um, because besides um, us being supported by TOCA, we all of our tools and seeds and different things were given to us by the community. And so that made it um, really um, a really awesome experience. And uh, there in our Oida, we definitely learned a lot. Um, we learned that the wildlife um, have their own ideas about, <laughs> about our food, not just eating it, but like the, the thought on the ants. Um, that was a funny thing to, to learn is that they'll move, they would move our seeds, you know, we would plant um, things in a certain area, but the food would actually start growing like at the other end and they were taking seeds and, you know, traveling through their tunnels and, <laughs> and putting them elsewhere, you know, wherever they felt they should be. Um, so that was that was um, pretty cool to learn. And then also just with the the um, the um, squirrels or the rabbits, you know, just learning about them in that way, you know, what foods did they like? Um, how were they how are they um, having access to our food? Um, again, with the ants too, um, learning how to, I guess, control and maintain them learning things like, um, you know, if we didn't want to use uh, chemicals or things to um, try to keep them from our, our food. Um, one thing I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember we were told was that if we, if somebody peed on an ant hole, um, that it would, uh, you know, keep them from, from um, uh, I guess it would kind of drop, um, it would, uh, it will make them not want to be there. And so that was something that we would, you know, kind of crack up and try. <laughs> uh, building compost, that was another learning lesson, um, how we would build our compost um, and learning that through, uh, and learning how it could work through like a real farm to table um, strategy because at the time Desert Rain Cafe was um, operating. So we would take a lot of the, the produce from there um, and be able to use it uh, for compost. Um, and um, yeah, the birds are another thing too. <laughs> and it, was, it literally did become our classroom in our office. And I think just learning what, a, what um, I guess how big of a commitment it was um, to grow in Oibuk, you know, to be out there every day, to be out there from morning to sundown. Um, but also, you know, having that opportunity to be outside together, to work together, to be under the lotto, all those different things were um, big learning experiences. And those are just a few, like I could, I could share a lot, but I think definitely um, doing the work and doing it with your family, your community, um, especially young people, it really gives you a sense of purpose because you're providing um, for yourself and for, for other people. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I know that is, um, there is a lot. There, there is a lot to share. And again, I, I think we're all learning. I mean, we've seen it. You know, those of you that probably have gardens, you see the ants, you know, and it's just cute because they're all little, but they have, you know, they're carrying the food that's bigger than they are. <laughs> and it's all like teamwork. They're all working together. <laughs> Yeah, so, but, you know, thank you for that. I, I, those are things that I've seen and I forgot about it, you know, but 
it's a really you know that's good that you know you shared that with us so <laughs> but like and, and, yeah, yeah go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay and then um I know I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and turn it over to Maisie so she can ask the next question. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much for um, the question, all the questions and answers, everyone. Uh, next question is for, I believe, uh, Amy and Joyce. For Amy and Joyce, what resources are available to community members interested in learning more? So first, Amy, if you can answer that question. Yes, um, I think there's a lot of resources. It, it depends on what you're looking for. You know, some people are just looking for seeds. Um, definitely organizations. I don't want to speak for them because they're on here, but just to give them a shout out, like Ajo CSA, um, some of our community farmers might also have seeds. Um, Santa Fe Co-op is one, um, and also uh, the museum. There's a lot of different, um, I guess, opportunities and work kind of in the background that's happening that I think will pop up in the next couple of weeks as we work to get those resources out um, to the community. Um, for, my, for myself right now, um, and what I've been doing these past couple of years is, uh, I guess, learning how to uh, write grants and different things like that to get the resources to do this work. Um, so one of the things I'm working on right now is um, with uh, Nina and Sterling on host CSA, um, him that he is to get um, community members um, OIDEC supplies um, and seeds so that people can start working on their OIDEC soon. And that came about um, because of, um, especially like uh, with COVID, uh, resources and opportunities. There was a lot of um, a big movement and a big push to to fund um, food work, and so that's an opportunity that came out of that. And uh, when I posed the question on Facebook um, in the winter time, you know, who out there would be interested in starting an OIDA? There were a lot of community members from different parts of the nation that um, were interested, and so. Now we're at a point where um, we're getting our things together to, to get that out to the people. Um, and those, those opportunities will continue um, as we move forward into the spring and the summertime. So those are some that I can share and I'm sure there's others that um, can share as well. Thank you so much for answering that question. Uh, moving on. To Joyce, if you can uh, go ahead and answer that question. Oh, okay. Um, the the one thing um, that I um, share is the with the college um, we have. Uh, agroecology class, <clears throat> which um, teaches you, um, well, it's a two-part class. Um, it it's a classroom setting. And then, um, and then on the other half of the class, we have um, labs, hands-on um, labs that go through from composting to making um, seedling mix, um, planting seedlings, direct seeding, irrigation, pest management, um, composting. Um, what else is there? Um, weather and climate, um, season extension, is, uh, crop rotation and crop planting or garden planning. And um, this is, um, it's a, <clears throat> We've um, worked with the, um, the Head Start. They um, had a, a collaboration about teaching um, some of the teachers um, and had them take this course so that they are could be able to start gardens in the Head Start. So this is um, one of the, the, um, the courses that I like to mention because it kind of gives you hands-on and then, and then on that part, you know, you can 
you know, ask questions, you know, during that time. And, and, and it's a really helpful class. Um, I've taken it and um, it's called Agroecology and Thon Optum Crop Production. And it, it kind of, it's kind of like a course for beginning farm gardeners. So, um, and then the other thing, the other resource, as I mentioned earlier, is the, um, the extension program. Um, like, like I mentioned before, um, we're available to go out um, to um, community members, um, homes, and, and um, help them with their, their, um, their garden or, if, you know, if they have an existing one or if they don't. Um, also too, um, we, we, have, we have a seed bank that um, we're currently building up. Um, we have some seeds that um, we usually um, give away when asked. Um, at one, what I, when I got into this um, program, um, um, that was one of the questions that I've heard asked over and over again. And um, we would give out, like when we would participate in different events, we would um, put some seats in the in the envelope, um, just for, you know, like starter kits for people. And then um, what we ask um, the individuals is to, um, you know, when they get their, their, um, their produce that they um, give some seats back to, to the program. So that way we can continue to build up um, our seat bank. Um, we, you know, we do have some seats, uh, traditional seats that we have, um, but there's some that we need, we're low on, so we're, we're not able to um, give, um, but what we usually ask too is um, the community member to kind of um, uh, make their garden plan. And so, and then that way where we know how much um, seeds they will be able to, that they will need to, to plant. Um, that's the two resources that um, I can say that that would be helpful for beginning gardeners. That's, that's all I have. Thank you for answering the question. And I will go ahead and pass it on to Selena. So too, um, just wanted to share quick, quickly, um, those of you that have joined us uh, on, if you guys are on the Zoom, in the chat box, you can see the TOCC where they share their information, their contact information. So if you have uh, questions, you can also reach out to them. And also I just received um, saying that the AHO library, they also have seeds there. So if anybody has any like other resources or places that um, you know that have she uh, seeds and are, are sharing, you can, you can uh, share that in the chat box. And Going winding down, I know we're coming up on our time, but this is really interesting. <laughs> um, I I would like to um, ask uh, Sterling um, if he could if you could share a little bit more of your apprenticeship with us. Yes. Um. Uh, so um, just uh, to plug out some of the, some other things in there, we do have our um, seats available at Aho Center for Sustainable Agriculture. Uh, we, um, we we do have varieties of seeds and um, pomegranate cuttings, um, and um, these are heirloom pomegranate cuttings that have survived through the desert and have probably been uh, put in in Quito Piquito or Quito Guac or um, or Chilta Guaya. So uh, we have pomegranate cuttings that um, that come that you know, originated from the Middle East, travel from the Middle East to uh, Africa, and then Africa to Italy, Italy to Southern uh, South America, and then South America all the way up to California. So we do have, um, so um, even the word um, carinayo or pomegranate, it doesn't mean pomegranate. Uh, it's a Spanish word to uh, describe, just like the Austin language is descriptive. Um, it means uh, grenade. 
So how did pomegranate uh, become a grenade? Now, those are the histories that we're still uncovering uh, to this day. So uh, our play on uh, on Cardinalio, um, our Granada, you know, it's very different. So, um, so we do have cuttings. We have um, Suna, if you guys don't know what Suna is, um, that's um, figs. So we actually have some from Quito Piquito that um, at home that um, we're gonna do more cuttings of. Uh, and then along with the, the melon and the watermelon, the bow seeds, I just got um, speckled tepary beans from of all, all places, New Mexico and Espanola. Uh, New Mexico from this um, New Mexico State University um, agricultural program. So I do. So I'm regarding out that this year. I won't have seeds for that, but um, we have uh, ganya too as well. We have seeds um, that um, we're going to be planting uh, to grow up for more seeds to give out to people, and that's one of the things that um, before uh, alfalfa. Uh, Ganya was used for uh, feed to feed the livestock. So um, even before the border patrol became more apparent, you no, know, uh, I remember growing up because uh, I you now come from Wichita, Oida, right next to Kodikichi. So, um, so I used to get um, you no, know, not just the Mexican sodas, but um, the pomegranates and the um, Ganya that used to come across, and then uh, after 2000, 2001, um, uh, that became less and less apparent um, as I started getting older, um, not having that available. And it's a shame that our kid, uh, the next generation, wouldn't know those, you know, those beautiful tastes that I grew up having. Um, so we have tons of seeds. Uh, we have also non-traditional seeds. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, um, we also have um, non-traditional seeds, so like tomatoes, chilies, peppers, uh, flowers, if you want to try this different other things, but uh, for new soil, it's always good to grow the, um, the bough, uh, because that's something that can go through the clay soil, the clay soils that we have on the Tana the Nation that we're known for growing um, the best fruits. Um, as far as our apprenticeship program for the last four years, we've been uh, doing apprenticeship with uh, different uh, cohorts or different groups of, um, um, of people. Uh, we have um, raised this on our uh, fourth one uh, where we are um, teaching them everything about farming. Uh, we hope to still continue that for the future as uh, we are, um, um, we have both the, um, so we have both, um, so we do both uh, traditional and non-traditional farming. So they grow you know, the, all the, what we call the mitigan stuff or the non-traditional stuff. So lettuce, kale, broccoli, you know, peas, you know, cabbage, anything, um, and teach them how to grow it also, uh, teach them to uh, eat it too as well. Prep, you no know, share. You no, know, it's not enough just to grow the food. Yeah, you no, know, you know, for people that are getting into farming, you, you have to eat your food too as well. You know, to understand uh, and give people a better understanding of what it's like. You know, for me, um, my eyes became a lot wider when being out here in Aho, eating things I never thought I'd be eating. You no, know, like arugula. You no. Know. Uh, broccoli raw, you no, know, no, picking um, chamomile, uh, this stuff like that, and then anything I'll be doing. So we offer a variety, variety of things, and then also just uh, being able to plant, you know, the traditional stuff, do a dry land farm, both in Ajo and on the reservation uh, where I'm, uh, where I'm from, uh, down in Wichita. So uh, we're hoping to. Do, and then also I'm partner with um, the Pancho Memorial Farm uh, down in Coquilic. Um So if you guys, um, and also, we also do an um, internship too as well. 
this during the summer we had an internship and actually for some uh, for um, some of you guys that uh, receive uh, receive food boxes from Aho, actually our interns actually put that together and they're from various ages from 15 to you know 18 years old and we're actually going to be um, um, looking for new uh, interns to uh, come work with us and they're going to learn everything the apprentices learn but also a little bit more um, but yeah our apprenticeship is um, open to everyone um, it is in Ajo and we do travel um, because um, Ajo is landlocked so we don't have a lot, whole lot of space but if someone wanted to grow uh, learn, grow on a small scale and do it you know, efficiently um, a good place to learn is here in Ajo because it's all we're all on small scale uh, but we do travel to other farmers um, on the on the nation and off to um, give a, a better view and also uh, show the world of food because it's not just uh, there's so much behind it you now politics um, your everyday life you no know, you no know, if you if we ate today you no know, you you got that from a farmer. Uh, excuse me, a farmer had to grow that food. So if you had a fry bread, you had red chili, you know, you had gokohida, you had chumet, no, you had pan, the whisko churro, um, fuakira chumet, no, all that came from a farmer. So, um, and we need to be more, no, for us, we can grow as a community, we can grow as as a district, you know, and we're teaching, uh, we are teaching the next generation along with, you know, other, um, with other um, people, the, how to grow and how to be, um, and, and to be strong because it, um, being a farmer is not just um, something that you just pick up, it's also you not know, something that you carry with you, regardless if you still grow or not. Um, that's one of the things that you know I learned. You know, I, I didn't mention where I planted my first bow. It was actually uh, wasn't near near my um, near my home. It was actually in uh, Papaco Farms. Um, that's where I actually learned how to plant you know, the bow for the first time, and to actually watch that and to see that you know mature and actually harvest and do that as a group. Uh, with my fellow co-workers, you know, it was an amazing experience that, you know, um, was, you know I worked different jobs and done different things, you know, uh, I, I want to say I could be a jack of all trades if I wanted to, but you no, know, for me, that was one of the things that I found more um, rewarding uh, out of a job was to do that and actually do that with people, so. Um, and to hopefully not to recreate that moment, but to you know, create that those memories of growing food, you know, how people, um, if you go through our Facebook, you can see um, when, when we um, have seats, uh, when we will have seats available, how to get a hold of us. Um, I will put that in the chat box as well, if you want to, um, to uh, get seats from us as well. Um, and then also, on Facebook, we will post when we're going to have the uh, internship program, um, and it's an amazing, amazing experience that um, our interns you know, you know, fit you no know, seven districts and all of Ajo uh, during this um, times of um, the pandemic. So um, I'm giving giving it to them because they were the ones that lifted the boxes and put everything together, and um, you no. Know, they're amazing and that um, for that forever they'll have that be able to use that for their um, college and their resumes you know, because they earned it. So um, yeah, I'll put the information there. So thank you. Um, uh, thank you guys uh, for having me and uh, we are you now we're all Center for Sustainable Agriculture. Um, we do um, we do our best to help with now, with many people as can, I do go to the Donato High School, and I work with uh, Kenny Lopez there. 
uh, and I do plant the garden with the kids there as well. So, um, so you know, we do reach the youth in some way. So um, we're hoping to um, working with Kenny. He wants to plant more trees. He's interested in, and I'm, I'm guiding him there uh, to be to uh, to become a, a farmer because he's enjoying it. So, so thank you. When you talk about it's all about food, you know, comfort food. Food brings people together. Uh, when you mention Visco Jorda, that that's the one thing I'm gonna learn how to make. <laughs> I know Jeanette, I'm gonna call you out. Your community in Santa Cruz, I know you guys do it. That's that's all you guys make when you have the festivities over in your community. I'm like, I have to go over there because that's all you guys give out. <laughs> And it's really, they're really good. But I, I want to learn for myself too. But um, I, again, you know, just, you know, it's really good to hear all of this, to share all of this. Because I know at some point we've, um, you know, had some kind of, uh, you know, engagement or have, you know, are involved with that. Even, you know, making, cooking it, planting it, whatever it may be. Um, it just, you know, again, culturally, you know, those are things that, that we know or, you know, we're still learning. So, you know, thank you again, Sterling. And, and, and um, again, I, I know this is really, we want to keep going, but I I'm going to turn it over to Maisie for one last thing, and then we're going to start closing out our, our session. So, uh, Maisie, you're, you're up. Thank you, Selena. Um, one of the questions that we would like to ask to Amy. And it is, do you know any autumn crop songs? How many do you know? Can it be shared or recorded when planting, then shared out to children or teach one person and they pass it down while planting that particular crop? So go ahead, Amy. Thank you. Uh, I do know some songs and um, I learned these um, planting songs along with um, the Don Automation Youth Council at the time, this was back in 2004 um, to about 2006 when we were just out of high school. And um, at that time when we formed the Youth Council, we really um, reached out to a lot of our elders um, to help us learn these things. And one of them was um, the late Francis Manuel Butt uh, from San Pedro Community, um, Shipdog District, who um, learned these songs from her um, her partner um, and from different people. And um, it really took <clears throat> the time just going to her house, going to her house and sitting with her and listening to the stories, um, learning the songs. And um, along with those, we also learned the um, the Jorkuna songs, the, the songs, the dance that we do with the formations of the birds and the rainbows and the clouds um, and it's all connected you know we we do that um, especially at harvest time um, to celebrate uh, with the jorkona and then also the uh, songs the, the um, rain ceremony songs the juchkita songs so um, and then also from other elders like the late Danny Lopez the late Christine Johnson but um, just I'm really really thankful for that time um, that we took to to sit with them because they're not here anymore so that gives us a big responsibility and um, it is it is such a responsibility that you know we know that we have um, the knowledge of these songs and what it took uh, for us to learn these songs and uh, to be honest sometimes it is um, a challenge to think about how um, to teach them, you know, because we would want, when I say we, because like I said, it was, it was our youth council. And a lot of times, um, especially like those visits to uh, Francis, to Francis's house, um, a lot of times that was done alongside with um, my Nawach and my Wuna, uh, Mikey Enos from WAP. And um, so I say we, because I, I count on that. I'm not the only one <laughs> with this, with this knowledge. Um, but we would want that same experience for other young people or just people in general who want to learn the songs because it means something to really um, spend the time and to listen to the stories and all of that. 
<clears throat> and um, but uh, when I say to be honest, sometimes it's kind of <clears throat> it's kind of difficult when um, someone just hits you up on Facebook and says, "Hey, can you send me this song? Um, you know, can you record this song? Can you send it to me?" And we don't want to say no because this knowledge, um, especially because it's so um, important and it's so you know sometimes it seems very um, um, urgent to share these things, especially I think looking back on a year like this year and how many elders and how many um, community leaders and people with knowledge that we've lost. So, you know, we kind of weigh that, you know, is it <clears throat> how, how important it is to, to share these things right away, but also keeping in mind that we wanna keep that, um, that value of spending time to learn and to listen, like to really, really listen to not just hear somebody, but to listen and, and that, you know, make sure that we keep those things and we remember them. So um, yes, I do know some, uh, I, I, there's two, there's actually a set of four. Um, there's two that I know really well. Um, there's a third one that I always get mixed up with and there's one more that I have yet to learn. But what I have learned and I'm thankful for is I feel like uh, personally and in the community, these songs come as we continue to grow. So for the first planting song, um, <clears throat> that was an introduction, you know, and it is, it's the first planting song we put the seed into the ground. The second planting song is singing about taking that time. It's like your plants have grown, um, but you take that time to, um, you take that time in the morning and in the evening to sit with them and just be thankful for where your, your plants are at. And then the third planting song is, uh, one of the harvest songs that sings about the hoon, and that's the one that I always get mixed up with. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's reminiscent or it is parallel to where we're at as a community. So we, we've got reintroduced to um, our Oida Kimbet, um, and now we're in a place where so much has grown, uh, farmers have grown, and we can kind of, you know, take a look back on what the past 10 years of this work has brought us to, and then now we look forward to the harvest. And these communities that are starting to grow food again, like, wow, what's that gonna look like in another 10 years? Um, and then further down the line. So um, that's, that's what I've learned um, just by learning those songs that I'm gonna share here in a little bit, so I don't wanna say, <laughs> don't wanna say too much. Um, but yes, really important. And, and, you know, some people I've heard say, well, maybe that doesn't matter, you know, um, in terms of being able to learn this song and sing it. Um, some people, you know, had said earlier, you know, talking to our plants is good. Um, but even with other things, um, like for instance, uh, toka, um, there's a toka song. Um, I've heard um, some young, young people say, well, maybe I don't need to learn it because then there's people who come to sing it. But it's like, no, <laughs> you know, if you play taco, if you're growing food, um, you definitely should um, learn these songs um, to have that connection. And they're, they're like the lullabies to the seeds and to the food um, because they, they also have DNA that's really old. They also have memory. That's why they're able to to grow as good as they do on our land because that's the best. Is this like their that's their their um um that's home really. So um I, I it is important. I, I feel it is important and myself and others are are always willing to to share that. But um like I said it is important to at least try to make time, you know, and, and out of respect. Um, not just for me, but you know where this knowledge came from because it's not mine. You know, it was just passed down to us. So um, in that way, yes, I get all passionate about it. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. That's, that's it for now. Thank you so much, Amy. I know mm -hmm. that there are a lot of songs that um, I got I get passed down to each and every one of us when it comes to just kahinas or meeting up with our elders or our grandparents and 
I, I like I like um the Thaka song a lot because it is the first song that I learned and mm -hmm. hearing it so much I'm I always um ask my other Thaka players my fellow Thaka players um and they say what well, do you know and I said yes I know it and they said what mm -hmm. how I said because we hear it all the time <laughs> it's hard yeah. not not to know it and in a way that does get passed down to us so I know I like that I know one version of it but the rest of the different types of versions versions mm -hmm. because of the dialect I'm I always get mixed up <laughs> mm -hmm. thank you so much for answering that question yeah. and I'll go ahead and pass it on to Selena okay cool thank you thank you ladies both and and again I'm just gonna uh reach out to Amy if you could share your song one of mm -hmm. your planting songs with us yes okay, thank you yes most definitely <clears throat> um, again, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's really humbling because, you know, the other panelists and other community members um, who have this knowledge, you know, um, there's so, so much to share and so many people that, that could share. So to have this opportunity to, to be here with you all, is, I really appreciate it and I'm really thankful to be a part of it especially the awesome work that NAF is doing, give you guys a lot of props um, and watching, you know, the, the community building that you're doing. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I will share um, the, the two that I know. Um, I'll share the, the beginnings with them just so, so we'll hear them and we'll know them. And um, I just want to give a shout out to um, all of the oibetsam, all of the farmers out there, um, thinking about just the conversation and you know where who are our best resources and, and there are families, our communities, especially if you come from a um, Akjin community, you know a farming community. There's definitely knowledge there, um, but others, you know, like I said, who couldn't be here? I was thinking about all these people, like. Um, that I've talked to, I know, and we know, um, and just want to mention them a name because I found that farmers are really, really humble people, really, really humble. <laughs> um, it, sometimes, you know, it takes a lot for them to put themselves out there because um, they're used to being out there on the land with the, with the plants <laughs> and in nature. But um, people like, like I said earlier, uh, Ray, Ray Anton, Nolan Johnson, Zaid Arnold, Duran Andrews, Gabe Mendoza, um, Jamie and Shamey, and Cenas, Kylan Blaine, Jesse Garcia, Gilbert Villegas, Jesse Pablo, Samantha Felix, Duke Patricio, Sammy Lopez, Mike Juan, Mr. Wesh. At Bobo um, and Mike Enos, and those are just a few. And I'm sorry if I forgot anybody, but I just wanted to mention them a name and just you know give them that respect. So this is dedicated to everybody. Um, and um, how you can tell a, a planting song is that beginning lullaby that iru ya aru um, as we're putting the seeds into the ground. <clears throat> Um, you know, because they're babies and we're giving them that care, singing to them. Um, so that's a way to differentiate what kind of song you're hearing. And this first song, the first song is um, singing about the horn and the hog. Um, the way that Francis but, uh, described it was you're asking the horn to grow tall, to reach the clouds, and you're asking the hog to spread to, for its vines or its leaves to spread. Um, to spread over the earth, you know, you think about that, these, these uh, vines and the way that they spread out and your oida. <clears throat> and then the second one is um, taking that time in the, the morning, like you said, um, and then the evening, the to, um to appreciate your hard work and appreciate your food that's coming. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of the first, the second one. <clears throat> okay. Iru ya aru, shajon 
Chuck of Love mm -hmm. uh, camp, I was like, I have to learn that song. <laughs> yeah, just practice, um, practice yeah. and keep it, even when you're by yourself, when you're cruising around, you know, with, with the kids, mm -hmm. so they pick up really fast. And, you know, these, these we don't want to lose these songs, um, especially with the work that we're moving forward with. So um, if you want to learn it, hit me up <laughs> or anybody else. <laughs> Yeah, definitely to, to teach that to more people mm -hmm. so, thank you okay thank you Sapo. you know i again you know again it's all about about sharing and 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 you know bringing people together you know again did you get we have our after school program and those are some of the things that we talk about you know not just te teaching the language but the songs and everything that else everything that comes together comes along with it you know so Sapo, thank you, Amy. Um, it just um, going back in. Um, we are like so over time, but I'm just <laughs> I'm glad everybody is still here with us. <laughs> and just to again, we're gonna close it out now. Uh, thank you to everybody, all of the panelists that joined us. I just have a couple announcements that I want to make on on our end as far as NAF uh, goes. Who much? Um, this year, uh, some of the things that we had talked about again, you know, we we uh, sponsored this Zoom uh, session just to, you know, uh, again bring people together, uh, get the education that you know that all the experts are sharing with us. Um, Gawa'a community, um, we have our roots garden here at the store. For those of you who have you've been to the store. But in the back, we have um, Ruth's Garden. It's an area that we use for our after school program where children come or families come to plant. And we talk about, you know, talking about the plants and how to say it in autumn, um, using the, the autumn calendar and, and things, you know, things of, 
that go again that go along with it but um, we are very uh, we reached out to uh, the communities here in our in our district in Gavoa district and so uh, we have uh, our district community managers them that is planning on doing two community gardens so that's what that's where we're at um, the representatives have reached out and uh, again you know this is something that they've been talking about and going back to um, with them you know they had all these fields all those all the oil duck out there where they were using the watering system from the dam that's a bigger project that's gonna that they're still doing research on as far as the community goes but for right now they're planning on doing two uh community uh two sites within their community um here in Gawa'o, we reached out we also in go community we reached out and and our our um asking uh, families if they would like to start their own little garden at their home. It's a much smaller project, but again, um, you know, just reaching out to the families and seeing who would be interested in starting their own garden if they don't have one yet. So those are those are the two uh, things that we have going on here in Gua'o. And um, I would like to, I uh, guess we'll close it out. Again, we saw on the flyer, we're, we're gonna be doing door prizes, so yay we're down to that and um i will go ahead and uh, let maisie maisie's gonna draw one and then i'll do the second one so maisie thank you selena okay well i'm shaking it up right now <laughs> it took me a while to find the container okay so the first name i got here is okay uh janette Jeanette Garcia. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what you want, but you want something. <laughs> I was I was gonna say that I was gonna share that. Cool, cool, Jeanette. You you won our our first door prize is actually it's gonna be it's a pot. It comes along with potting soil. It's gonna come with uh, four types of different seeds and a garden tool set. Awesome. Congratulations, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, yeah. She said that we could visit her community so they can teach us Visco Joida. Not this yeah. year, but another time, she said. So I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shake this up. Our second door prize winner. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Let's see here. Ah! What? No, I was kidding, Jeanette. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> this is crazy. How does this even happen? Okay, hold on. Another name. Let's see here. Oriana Apko. I don't know if she's still on. Oriana? I think. <laughs> but anyway, she's our she's our second door prize winner. Um Hers is, uh, she's getting, the door prize is a pot with, with potting soil. Again, four types of different kinds of seeds. And it's a solar hummingbird chime, wind chime. It looks really cool. So that's what I want to buy for myself. <laughs> but congratulations to our winners. And thank you everybody for joining us. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. you, Nella. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank all you. for Hi, sharing. everybody. You were awesome. Thank you, everybody. Yes, and everybody, enjoy your evening. You too. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.